you know, we've done the Defender, obviously, but for the, the UK team, it's, it's a kind of new art style. And also, you know, the Defender is vastly smaller in terms of its size. There's a, our normal kind of approach to how we kind of layer in the details um, has needed a bit of kind of alteration. Um, and we've had to kind of think about how we're going to bring in some of those smaller scale elements to give a better sense of size and scale. Because, you know, when you zoom out from this ship, you still want it to feel huge. And huge it feels. We're talking about a ship that still fits on the large pads, that folds in its wings, that has an incredible amount of cargo space, multiple shops, even a medical facility. Let's dive into this ship and see what the new content is for it and see if it truly is warranted for the 600 USD price point or 550 for the Warbond CCU chain. Spoiler alert, it is. Coming up behind at the sides. Obviously, if it's coming on front, the pilot has more than enough means to be able to deal with it themselves. And if your instinct was to stop the YouTube video and go immediately to comments and say it's pronounced Sheon, Mark, get a better hobby. Oh, I'll say you'd be correct. <laughs> Directly behind the bridge where the actual operations occur, you have some basic features for if stuff goes wrong. So you have some suit lockers to put emergency suits in. Because obviously, they're not going to want to go around in their day-to-day -day lives wearing their spacesuit all the time. But if something goes wrong, they do want them to hand. So next to the actual escape pods, you have your suit lockers to quickly get suited and booted and then be able to get into your escape pod and get out of there if you need to. So they have one on either side, one for each of the actual crew that would be on the bridge, as well as a couple of extra, because leading a little further down, we actually have the, the more habitation side of the ship, but we'll we'll get to that when we get there. Directly behind, we also have the entryway to get inside the main man turret this is kind of one of the rooms that we spent a bit of time kind of playing with in white box and making sure we got it right i'm experimenting with a slow motion effect trying to give you a good visualization of what they're covering while i cover it please add in the comments below or just reach out to me in discord if this works for you or if it's kind of jarring uh just kind of indicating where i'm at and where they start speaking again straight up so the cockpit the safety zones like the ejection areas like the escape areas and the suit lockers and such are right easy access to the oh, cockpit it feels like a cockpit a lot like the defender cockpit but it's a bridge it actually is a bridge of the ship and then the turret area behind the bridge is nice easy access um i wouldn't put a ton of stock in this single turret uh, it, it's, it, the, while ship weapons look big, if you haven't been in Star Citizen for a bit, uh, that has a, has a single range of fire. It is not going to protect the bottom of the ship, which has smaller turrets. And also it's not your main armament. Uh, the main armament's on the front of the ship. And we're going to go into that in a little bit, but just bear in mind, it is a nice little selection there. And I could see two or three players being able to handle this area and easily be able to transition from working the bridge to doing damage control or even escaping uh getting on the turret and such all in the same location i like the layout not meaning to to uh to tear it apart or anything it isn't any cic or anything but it has a solid Century. solid jobs so the banu are known for being very multicultural when it comes to their religious beliefs. So they have a entire area dedicated to worship, to fortune, to hoping that things are going to go well for them or that the next trade deal is going to be a good one. So this is sort of at the end of the tree of life, which is how the entire ship's built around. And it makes sense for it to be at the end of the tree because it, it's where everything comes out from. So it was important to, to keep that feel that it runs through the root of the ship. Going off the side of the sanctuary area, we have the med bay, something that people are very curious about where it actually was. Um, it's just off to the side, just behind the bridge, just near where all of the actual habitation is. You have a primary medical care bed, which will do your day-to-day -day actual healing. And then you have recovery beds, similar to the ones we have on the Carrick. Now, rather than just being a bed, decide to try something a little different it's now these pools of healing so it's gel. his main station as well as storage supplies for whatever medical supplies that he needs obviously at the moment it's just the back of the bed but it's where you do refills on the bed or anything else that you'd need to do obviously the doors across the entire ship are very alien in appearance so though they 
they make sense, but at the same time, like you, you, it was very important that like, going across this to make everything make sense to the human eye, but at the same time be so different. So this updates the 2021 map a little bit. Sorry, no slow mo here. I wanted to really show the visual of the cutaway of the ship to give you an idea of what. If you're considering the ship or if you're considering well, boarding the ship or doing commerce on the ship, whatever your case may be, <laughs> uh, get an idea of what you're getting into. You can see the sanctuary uh, basically at the top on the right side, just below the turret, the, the top turret that we saw earlier in the bridge and such. The sanctuary is the next floor down. You can use the elevators, you can use the stairs and uh, get back and forth to that location. Notice that the crew elevator goes up higher to the bridge and sanctuary and such into the crew areas and the medical than the, uh, the guest areas elevator. I've said before that this is going to be kind of a headache for uh, crew members if somebody says they need a recovery, that recovery gel pool stuff or needs a primary medical bed, they will need to go to the private side of the ship to get medical treatment. My hope is that in that market, they will allow clinics and bars and such like services, and then that won't be necessary. So if you want to work on a, on a, on a planet where you may not trust every single player, MVC, etc., but you want to do business in the public side where you have guards and such, uh, th this would be a wiser move than having a private medical facility that being the only medical on such a large ship. Although this, is, this might be considered a nitpick to some. Especially if you don't intend to do business in sketchier areas or without people being friendly to your organization or uh, maybe just NPCs and friends of yours, etc. So this is just a thought I had. Also, this means if somebody respawns at your, at your, at your medical facility, they will be automatically be inside the protected bubble, so to speak, of the private side and be able to get to the bridge pretty quickly. The sanctuary also, to me, represents kind of a way to may have a little extra storage space if you're not into RP elements or into the um, multicultural celebration of, of these religions. It's, it's pretty cool, but to me it represents something of, uh, from a gameplay standpoint, is that's void space, basically. It's a large hallway uh, that uh, has a little extra seating, you know, and if you're not into those elements. It is neat. Uh, the medical facility itself, I'll just say that it, it, it is a lot like the Carrick. It has a single really powerful bed and then two recovery beds to the sides. And the medical supply room next to the doctor's uh, workstation and be hidden behind the primary bed um, is very important because that means that that size of room is the limitation of how many supplies you have. It has been stated multiple times by CAG, it will require a certain amount of medical supplies to do certain levels of, tr of healthcare treatment. Like regen will be like the highest of the highest medical supplies or like a critical wound versus just some basic level of medical treatment requiring a lot less medical supplies. So that room will probably stagnate and then you're gonna have to think about how do I get supplies from our large cargo grids or in our market all the way up to this location probably through the crew elevators, little by little. Something to think about. The recreation and social habitation area. So you've got your food maker, along with areas to actually eat, as well as the actual social area. So people can sit around, talk, plan stuff out. And I think yeah, one of the things that we, we try to tackle here is obviously we have very strict metrics for our human characters. And the, the Banu is a, a race are generally a bit taller, a bit larger. Um, so there's that kind of balance between making things um, f work for both scales of character and, and making sure that, you know, um, we don't end up with, you know, let's say like the, 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 the child in the seat. I remember we brought it up in one of the, the, um, the update meetings and, you know, the, the consensus was, well, yeah, this is a Banu ship. And whilst they support all the other races that, that we have in our universe, um, ultimately, it's their ship, and so things should be made to to their scale. Directly off the habitation area, we have a secondary control for the hangar section. So if someone needs to actually be allowed to enter into the hangar, you have a separate control room to allow you to open up the hangar doors to permit the additional ship to come in. Once again, the standard doors, but the, the whole animation, all of it's very alien. 
Coming off the habitation area, we have two staff lifts. So these ones would be specifically for the staff to allow them to move around the ship a lot easier. Um, we'll, we'll come back to them later because there's a, a better point to show them, but they just give you more access just because of the size of the ship. We needed to have multiple ways to get up and down. Otherwise, if you want to get from one part to another, you'd have to run the entire length of the ship, go down the floor to run the entire length again. A ship that's a victim of its own success. That's one of the things that's a takeaway here. You have these tall ceilings, these giant chairs. They take up space. They have to because the Banu are much taller than humans and they have to work through it. Also, the elevators are something that has been learned from multiple ship designs in the past. I recall the Idris being made fun of for having all these tunnels and elevators and, and, and multiple stairways leading to different places, and there's very good reasons for that. If they're damaged in battle, if someone is trying to take the ship, if you need to get back and forth for damage control, that's just a loan from the usable cases during bad times. In good times, it's going to be even more critical when this ship is full of people, both both org mates and staff and such, uh, personnel of the ship, and then also having the public side facing elevators. We're going to go to in a minute for the public facing side. But just understand, this is a large, large ship. And to work this ship will require multiple people and more likely a lot of NPCs and a few couple people. But <laughs> just understand the scaling of this ship and think carefully if you and your friends are going to be up for running this and if this is the kind of ship for you. Uh, sorry, we have the crew specific lift. This has access to all of the floors, unlike the customer lift. This is the passenger entrance area. So the lift uh, will go to this floor for all of the passengers, which then gives them a little foyer area before they enter whatever floor they're on. We have the meeting area. So this is the conference room where important delegates would come to discuss significant trade negotiations rather than I'm going buying a power plant, I'm going to buy fuel. This is where serious conversations and serious negotiations go on. Yeah, this, is, this has got like a really nice view out over the, um, like the cargo hold as well, doesn't it? Yep. To the side of the actual meeting and delegation room, we have the VIP suites. So obviously your VIP delegates are going to want something a bit nicer, a bit more special when it comes to where they're resting. So they have their own private chambers so that they can rest and relax and freshen up before they actually go do any significant meetings. And again, this this, this sort of room highlights um, a lot of the, uh, I guess, the shape language and the difficulties on the ship is that they're, they're, you know, everything's curved, everything flows, and, and there is that kind of like real kind of like leading um, shapes that kind of like lead you through the ship as opposed to you know, what we're so used to on, on a lot of our uh, human manufacturer ships whereas you know everything's hard and, and angled and flat um really the only thing in this ship that's flat is the floor so the negotiation table has one seat at the top for the actual mediator which obviously would be a member of the crew and then even number of seats on either side for the delegates to have their discussions from the actual meeting room you get a fantastic view of the cargo hold where all of your goods would actually be stored as you can see the amount of cargo that the ship holds is colossal and just the sheer volume of it gives you this cavernous cathedral-like view of being stuck in the rafters of a, a warehouse worth of stock yeah it gives you a real sense of how tall the ship actually is uh, when we get to the, the the market um you kind of get a glimpse at that but it's not until you get into somewhere like this that spans the whole or not even the whole height you've got the hanger above the the height of this um how, how big the ship actually is let's just get this out of the way now those vip rooms are going to be for your org mates uh i can see small org staging entire organizations out of this dang ship and systems like pyro or somewhere like that if it has enough cover and such uh until you get your feet on the ground and outposts are in and such uh side note those cargo areas the way they're split up is actually a tactic they said they used in the Kraken to keep the cargo down to a certain amount. There are like elevators, I think, on the sides when you get to the end of those cargo, the center of the cargo grids, like the, the center of the cross there, the square. And, um, <laughs> but really, that's a ton of cargo lost uh, in those areas. I think that's for balance reasons. And uh, that, that was specifically why they did that in the Kraken. 
They had the one massive cargo hold in the vanilla Kraken, and their finance and, and economy people were like, this is too dang much cargo for the size. I think with the cargo refactor, it's going to be really interesting to see the amount of SCU it actually totals out to. Once again, that's all going to change very soon. In an attempt to try to keep these videos evergreen, you can see for yourself it is a massive cargo hold. And uh, yeah, it is very exciting. And it is great to have org support with those small, with those uh, nice big rooms. And as a reminder, you will need those personal rooms because you'll be living out of ships like this. And the bigger the room, the more storage space is what we're assuming at this point. The kind of customers are going to see when they first walk into the ship is this sort of like reveal um, of the market area. And what we try to do in, in, in this area is um, kind of everywhere you walk into it, you're kind of... Um, walking through a, a small tunnel or, or you know, quite a tight space so that when you kind of do walk into it, it does then open up and you can see that sort of like that, that grandeur and that height of the ship. And, you know, this is only two out of, I think it's five or six floors at this point of, of you know, the, the part of the ship you're in. Um, but I think it's just a nice kind of like reveal of the, the, the overall kind of, uh, again, just repeating that, that size and that verticality that, that we see in the other areas of the ship. Um, I think we've already shown a lot of the concept art of this area already, um, but the idea here is that you've got this, you know, hollow in the middle that will kind of, you know, will allow um, the the uh, the traders to kind of show off some of their um, items that might not fit in the shops or might be, you know, too valuable to place in the shops. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very exciting area of the ship. This part. Okay, and the last area we want to show you today is is kind of the area that we spent a little bit more time on. It's a little bit further along. We try to take some areas and push their visuals so we've got a good understanding of, of how much work's involved and you know what the kind of like the final ship is actually going to look like um because it is such a large ship and there's going to be a lot of people ultimately working on it i think it's good to have that kind of key area that you can kind of refer to as, as you know yeah this this is what the merchantman's all about and whilst each area of the ship will have its own feel will have its own kind of uh style and in its own forms um, I think this is a good indication of um, the kind of elegance. And you know, if you imagine this is the crew area and the uh, guest area is going to be a level above this, um, I think it gives you a good idea of, of what we're aiming for. So here it is. What I believe, aside from the cargo area, is truly the heart of this ship. It's kind of symbiotic, isn't it? You know, you have the big docking collar, you have the big staircases, you have all these elevators to what? For what? Big cargo areas good living spaces technically i guess you could say as well and the market area the cargo feeds the market because the market can only hold so much scu per market space we've learned this from the kraken privateer as we've had it more and more revealed to us how markets will work that are player owned in these ships i do not believe that this is going to be in the same category as a privateer this is a different kind of ship. It's meant to kind of land at a place and be a, well, like, they, like they've said themselves, CIG said themselves multiple times, it's a more of a bazaar, a very opulent bazaar, but more of like this amazing wares place that can kind of cargo hold, etc. But as a privateer is more of a flying uh, space station uh, that's mobile, where you can um, dock, handle a lot of things with your friends, uh, org mates, and new friends, I guess you could say, uh, that you wish to deal with in a more professional capacity. You know, this isn't you're dealing in the back of a cargo hold uh, in either of these ships, but they do have a little different vibe, I would argue. And I would also argue that the landing pads on the privateer do elevate it to a space station and lend it better to those type of roles. Whereas the Gravlev cargo elevator and the large gantries and such that support it separate from the market, unlike in the privateer, uh, for cargo and such, uh, do elevate it to a different category for ground-based dealings. Now, yes, I do know there's cargo separate from the market in the privateer. However, it's significantly smaller due to the market spaces. So it brings up an interesting question of balance and such. And don't forget, this ship is in a completely different cost category than the privateer. So, a lot, <laughs> a lot of questions to answer still. Uh, you know, I'm treading carefully because I, I, I want to make sure that 
we we see something real here. And I've seen the sentiment being a lot of people picking up CCUs for this ship and then hanging on to them, not applying them. I believe that's a smart move to really see where it lays out and where your vision for you and your Oregon friends are in the future. Remember to talk with people and think carefully. People in your time zone, how's it going to work? Thank you for your time. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It's greatly appreciated. And have a good night.